Well, welcome to everyone. I'm just so delighted that you've tuned in for Hawthorne University's All About Alumni. And if you're listening for the first time, I want to let you know that All About Alumni is a platform that showcases Hawthorne graduates, and they're able to share their post-grad activities and accomplishments. It's just amazing to me the many ways that they're using their Hawthorne education in their practices. And we have a variety of nationally accredited degree and certificate programs in Hawthorne. And some of them are for those that are seeking a clinical track with the goal of working directly with clients. We have other programs that are dedicated to those that are seeking to primarily educate, write books, develop courses, workshops, and programs, do public speaking, or teach for a school. And then there's other programs for those who simply want to learn valuable, credible information in a conducive environment. You know, the success of our students is really a testament of Hawthorne's mission and principles to provide quality, affordable, holistic health and nutrition education. Regardless, we all love to learn more at Hawthorne. I'm your host, Paula Bartholomew. I'm one of the founders of Hawthorne, and it's such a privilege to speak with and feature our graduates. So let's get started. Today we're going to feature Katie Lambert. She's a graduate from our unique Masters of Traditional Nutrition program. And Katie is going to share her journey from athlete to cook to her MS journey at Hawthorne and her professional life after. And while I have the pleasure of interviewing Katie, you sure have the opportunity to ask her questions directly too. And I encourage you to. All you need to do is post a question or a comment to the webinar panel and um, I'll present it at the end of the presentation. Also, one more point, we are recording, and this will be posted to our website. You'll find it under archived webinars. All that said, I want to welcome you, Katie. It's really exciting Thank to be here together. Thank you, Paula. I'm looking forward to it. I am, too. It's really a pleasure to introduce you and have you share your post-grad experiences, so let's get started. Originally from Louisiana, Katie moved to the Sierra Nevada in 2006 to pursue her career as a professional rock climber. Based out of Bishop, California, Lambert holds a master's degree in traditional nutrition with a special interest in type 2 diabetes prevention and is a nutritional counselor with her business, High Sierra Nutritional well Wellness. She also works with food and nutrition as head cook and holistic nutritionist for Sacred Rock. That's a youth-focused not-profit based in Yosemite National Park, and her ex personal experience with using food as medicine combined with her studies have provided Lambert with a wealth of knowledge on how to best nourish and heal the body with real whole and traditional foods. Beautiful, Katie. We're so pleased that you've joined us, and uh, are you ready to, to share some of this journey? I sure am, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, it's I, I, with moving to the Sierra Nevada to pursue your rock climbing career, which is fascinating in and of itself. I'm curious how how that led to a career in nutrition. Um, yeah, it's been an ongoing story, uh, starting with my climbing. In 2006, like you said, I moved to Yosemite, um, and the climbing there required a lot more of my body than I had been previously used to, um, and I was feeling that I needed some changes um, in my diet in order for uh, performance and recovery. Um, and wanting to be the best athlete I could be, I started to really focus on what I was eating. Um, and I started really getting into eating like good and clean food and I was seeing some really good improvements. Um, not only in my performance and my recovery, but just general overall health. I wasn't as sore as I had been. Um, my joints weren't as achy. Um, I was just feeling better. Um, and I was really getting into sourcing local, seasonal, and organic food. Um, and eating locally also started to mean that I was eating a lot of like wild and native plants. Um, and since we spend a lot of time outdoors all over the world for climbing, um, mm -hmm. I was really interested in what things could be wild foraged at local climbing areas. I was seeing stuff like onions and asparagus and berries and just seemed like nature was showing me what I needed at these places. Um, and at the same time, I was starting to read a lot of literature on food as medicine and I was just getting increasingly curious about this. Um, oh, my, uh, there we go. Um, in 2009, I helped start a nonprofit um, with another professional climber based out of Yosemite named Ron Kalk. Um, and it's through all of our time in nature that we came up with the idea for this nonprofit because not only 
were we getting the benefits of being in nature, but we knew that if we could just get people to come outside, even just for like a 30 minute walk, they could see the benefits themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so our mission of Sacred Rock is to support youth in nature, helping youth to learn to respect nature and through that to respect themselves. Um, we work with primarily at-risk youth throughout California's Central Valley. And one of my main duties there um, is to function as camp cook. That's mm -hmm. how it all started. Uh, a lot of these kids have been labeled and diagnosed as something. They all have ADHD. They have a lot of allergies, a lot of anxiety, asthma, diabetes, depression, um, difficulty learning. It just goes on and on. So sad. And in looking into the facilities and agencies that these youth were coming from, I quickly had an idea of the types of food that they had access to. Um, mm -hmm. You know, these are large government subsidized or big industry organizations um, with companies like Aramark and Trinity. And uh, especially with this demographic, the quality of food really isn't a concern. Um, and since we're all about respect, you know, good nutrition equals respect for nature equals self-respect. It's this cyclical thing um, that I was seeing firsthand and that, you know, it, it just seems it's like a no-brainer. It's obvious. Um, and learning to take care of ourselves is fundamental to this and health and nutrition are inseparable from this. Um, mm -hmm. So as Camp Cook, my mission with this nonprofit is to, to provide these youth with like real nutrient dense foods that they can also have access to um, on their own or in their communities, whether it's homegrown or raised, um, locally grown or raised. It definitely needs to be affordable. And then things like wild forage foods, you know, that's not only affordable, but anyone can find those things. Um, in our trips, you know, some of what we do is we'll go out and gather a lot of these wild forage foods. And this is a really like interesting learning opportunity for these youth. Um, it's really exciting. And it's, it's like they have these, oh my gosh, like this is where real food comes from. We had no idea. It just mm -hmm. grows in the ground or, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so with these meals and with this program, what we were starting to see really quickly were changes in their behavior and their health issues just within the short span of our working together um, in our wilderness outings. And this really reaffirmed to me a drive to start working with food as medicine. It's such a um, beautiful story here. You know, it's so sad, the circumstances that they're in and what a blessing to find you in this program and real food. <laughs> Bravo. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. You know, I think the timing is everything and it was just the right timing for all of this. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, my desire to know more about food and health kept growing. Uh, then fast forward a few years to 2014 and my husband was diagnosed with ulcerative proctitis. Um, he was experiencing a lot of pain, a lot of discomfort, um, and, you know, had to go to the doctors and they gave him antibiotics and some other meds. And they basically told him that he was just going to have to take this stuff for the rest of his life and he'd be okay. Um, when he inquired about the possibility of his diet affecting this or causing this, they just got this glazed over look and kind of scoffed at him as if like diet and the intestines and the colon had like nothing to do with it. And um, that just didn't sit right with us. We don't like to take medicine. Uh, he was young at the time. He's still young now, but you know, he was not even 40 and the idea of having to take meds from then on for something like this just seemed preposterous um so he kind of took matters into his own hands and got in touch with an ayurvedic practitioner in our community um and through following her protocol he healed himself with diet and this was another one of those real aha moments um it was a relief and a sign that I should really start to pursue nutrition. 
<laughs> so it's a great story. You know, I'm so glad, you know, to hear this taking matters into his own hands and, and healing and hope he went back to the doctors and showed them too. <laughs> yeah, he did. And they were like, uh-huh, sure. <laughs> sure. Whatever. All right. Well, <laughs> maybe someday. Um, well, yeah. so all that said, what led you to um, Hawthorne and the, uh, and the Master's in Traditional Nutrition program? Okay, so around the same time, actually, about a month later after his diagnosis, um, I had a small climbing accident and I broke one of my ankles in two places. And I couldn't climb um, for about nine and a half weeks. And I almost, I had this like, recovery, Katie. it was pretty fast. I didn't need surgery, which is the reason that I think it was so fast. Um, mm -hmm. But this was a real, almost like an existential crisis for me because I, with climbing as one of my main day jobs and sacred rock work really requiring me to be like on my feet and active, um, I was wondering like, well, what would I do if I couldn't climb again or if I couldn't walk again? Even though it was a pretty minor break, you know, you start to wonder those things. Um, yes. You know, what if I'm limited for the rest of my life? What would I want to do with my time? Mm -hmm. And there really seemed like no better time than then to really delve into a nutrition degree since everything had been pointing in that direction. Mm -hmm. um, so. After a lot of internet research, I discovered Hawthorne. I was really interested in finding a program that could work with my schedule um, once I started climbing and working again, especially since I live in a very remote area um, of the Sierra. And I really wanted a program that focused on basically using food as medicine and coming back into um, health through food and the MST in program had everything that I was looking to learn about um, how to return to and maintain optimal health through real and traditional foods really spoke to me mm -hmm. and well, so I enrolled it's, <laughs> it's it's a beautiful thing Katie and I also am aware that um, while you were going through your ankle injury you were using food to help yourself heal is that right that's right. I was really getting into using um, a lot of chicken feet stock to help heal not only the bone, but the soft tissue because it was the soft tissue that I was told was going to be um, kind of the biggest hurdle to get through because it had been pretty damaged. Um, and this stock was showing like amazing benefits, not only for just like my hair and my skin were feeling really nice, but I was feeling um for lack of a better term, like very well lubricated. I was feeling mm -hmm. really good. Uh, and my ankle was healing nicely. Um, and then looking into, you know, what cultures use these stocks, um, I started to understand that like, uh, like treats like. So, you know, using chicken feet stock would obviously help with my own feet. Um, mm -hmm. Things like that. that. That was really interesting to me. And and looking into the MSTN program, it had it had all of that information in there too. And yeah, this seemed like the way to go. It's such a, it's such a sweet dovetail, you know, that this happened. It's an existential crisis potentially to you, at least on an emotional level. You're uncertain of your future. You use chicken stock. You find the MSTN program, which teaches <laughs> Dr. Price's <laughs> principles. So. This is a good opportunity, and if you don't mind, just will you talk a little bit about the uniqueness and, and what you studied and, and learned in this program? Yeah, um, it definitely was a unique program. Um, it provided, you know, being based on Dr. Price's findings, which was, you know, for those who may not be totally familiar, um, you know, he was a dentist at the turn of the century. He had given his um, son, a root canal, his son ended up dying from a brain infection from that root canal. He was exacerbated by this, um, found out through different sources about these traditional cultures that, um, you know, were experiencing or living with like perfect health, their teeth 
were perfectly healthy. And he was like, you know, there's got to be a better way in the U.S. for for dealing with this stuff. Um, and what is it? And so he went out uh, and traveled the world with his wife to look at these um, remote or primitive and traditional cultures. And what he was finding was that those people who were still living on their traditional diets hadn't um, hadn't really taken on the modernized industrialized diets of the day were experiencing pretty much perfect health um, and so he started to look at what they were eating uh, the MSTN program is is founded on all of those principles of you know going back to these original traditional foods um, not only using them for nutrition, but using them for medicine and using them for health. Um, and this was really, really interesting to me. It seems so obvious, uh, you know, but they say like the obvious isn't so obvious sometimes. Um, and our modern day society has moved so far away from this. It just seemed preposterous to me that this wasn't um, common knowledge. Like, how did I not know about this? How did any of us not know about this um, when it's the way that we have been living for thousands of years? And yeah, so there were a lot of really interesting courses um, and I got a lot of really interesting information out of it. Well, that led you to, uh, you know, it's, it's astonishing to me. I mean, I watch all the time when people move here from other cultures and they've been eating traditionally and then they come and start adopting the standard American diet and quickly their health starts, um, you know, um, eroding yeah. and, and certain symptoms and then conditions uh, arrive. And, you know, returning to traditional foods is really the way back to, to health. So, Really good overview of the program. So, how did you, you had a final project in in this master's program? How did you decide on the topic for it? Yeah. So, um, being really taken by Dr. Price's findings and work, and living where I live, uh, which is in Bishop, California, there's a very large uh, Native American population here, and then working with the youth um, in the nonprofit, you know. There's also Native American youth, but there's also a lot of first generation Americans and um, kids that are coming from pretty traditional cultures, but who have adopted the standard American diet. And I was seeing firsthand exactly what Dr. Price had seen, and I felt very inspired to help bring these populations the information that I was learning um, at Hawthorne to help them come back into health. Um, and so I decided on a project um, that was type two diabetes prevention in native populations through whole and traditional foods. Beautiful. Um, and it was around the same time that I was gathering all my information for this project and really kind of starting to see if this is really what I wanted it to be on that a new program was being developed at the Toyabi Indian Health Project here in town, which is a tribal hospital in Bishop. Um, this program is called the Bishop Paiute Food Sovereignty Program. Mm -hmm. And it, its main purpose is to help the people in the community grow their own food, restore the use of traditional foods, and to keep the seed bank. Um, and with this in mind, it seemed like my thesis project or my final project was exactly the thing to do. Uh, I'd say so. so I was, you know, I was like looking more into this. I was getting in touch with people there and it had me at that hospital facility quite a bit. And I became familiar with their preventative medicine department. Um, and part of that department is a diabetes support group. And I thought that this was the perfect opportunity uh, to be able to bring a community project to them. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was able to start working with this existing program, and I developed a six-part community outreach series uh, based on traditional foods, how the standard American diet is harmful to health, and what the nutritional benefits are of returning to and using traditional foods from the area. Um, recipes and food were always provided as part of the lecture, and the people were really receptive, and it started um, a project of creating a cookbook by the community for the community. So 
you know, I worked with a lot of the people, especially some of the elders in the area, um, to look into what the traditional foods had been, what foods they're still using now, and then how can we make um, kind of more modern recipes or recipes that would be a little bit more appealing, especially to the younger people. Um, mm -hmm. And they basically are making a cookbook for themselves. Um, and this really, it set into motion something that I hope will be long lasting. There have been a little bit of setbacks, especially with the current um, administration. Um, the Trump administration cut a lot of funding for preventative health care. And as a result, this program lost some funding. And so some things have been put on hold. But recently I went over there just to see how things are going. And they're, they're still getting together um, a little bit unofficially, but they're still working on this stuff. And that, that actually made me feel really good. <laughs> Yeah, it's too important not to. So when you said that um, people were very receptive, were those the participants, but was it the hospital as well? The hospital as well. You know, the first two presentations I gave, it was mostly just people from the group who, who usually come to the meetings. And then by the third presentation, um, a lot of the staff and employees of the hospital were coming and what started off as like eight to 10 people in a room, by the last presentation, there were around 45 people in there. Um, they were bringing their families. Um, it, yeah, it was really, it was inspiring for me to see that because they were, they were being moved by this information um, and they were really getting a lot out of it. I love this, I've got chills. You know. <laughs> really you know that you start with two people and you've got a room of 45 and people are bringing right. their families because of the value of it yeah bravo katie thanks thank you <laughs> so this was a lot in and of itself but you also started your own nutrition consulting business so what led you to to do that yeah so i didn't want to totally pigeonhole myself in this one area um, of nutritional therapy or education um, because sport is a huge part of my life, there's also a large elderly population in my hometown, and I wanted to be able to offer help to those looking to improve their diets for performance, much like I had done, as well as those who are managing illness and disease, and not just specifically diabetes. Um, mm -hmm. There are absolutely zero nutritional professionals uh, around um, in my town, or even like within like I don't even know, like a 75 mile radius. There's no one here um, giving nutritional information aside from the hospital. And, you know, it's your basic dietitian, and they're still focused on the standard American diet. Um, so there was this need in the community, and I wanted to fill that need. Um, and so I started to start to feel like really certain about starting my own consulting business so that I could offer my services and this information to the broader community. And thus I started High Sierra Nutritional Wellness. Um, so what, what kind of services and, and programs are you offering through so High Sierra? My goal is to help clients identify the areas in their diet and lifestyle that could be negatively affected or affecting their health and um, to provide them with clear instruction guidance and support to make the changes they need to obtain optimal state of wellness. Mm -hmm. So I provide them the information and support they needed to make changes in their food choices and eating habits, um, as well as about their health care. And, you know, we're all different. Not every one person is the same. So it's not just like this blanket thing I can give them. So I work with each person's bio individuality to develop like a personalized health protocol. We use diet, some supplementation, but I prefer to just focus on real foods um, and lifestyle suggestions to improve their health and well-being. Um, and some of my services, I do personal one-on-one -on -one nutritional counseling. Um, I do offer one-offs, which are like $75 for an initial consultation and $60 for follow-ups. But I offer packages um, of six meetings for a total of $360. And what I'm seeing is a lot more positive long-term outcomes um, when people buy the packages as opposed to the one-offs. 
Uh, but I still like to offer the one-offs because maybe it's just someone who is generally healthy, but they just want a little more information or some education mm -hmm. about something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I also do meal plans, 14-day uh, meal plans at $120. Um, and uh, and I do so that would be like, like a, a whole day's meal plan, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. That's drinks, right. Things like that's that. right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's always the same thing. It's not a blanket thing that I give um, every person. It's all, you know, tailored to their specific needs or requirements. Um, and then I also do quite a few community and event workshops and presentations and the prices range uh, from 60 to 30 per person, depending on where the event is. Um, and it's usually a, about a 20 person max. Um, and these okay. are some of oh, the great. flyers for my presentations. Um, I've done quite a few, but I didn't want to, you know, overload you with visuals. <laughs> <laughs> I like the visuals, though. Your graphics are very nice and your organization. I mean, it's nice to be able to see some of these flyers and, and professional materials. Great color on this. Well designed. Well done. Yeah, and you can see uh, the workshops are pretty varied. Like the first one is health through nutrition and exercise. Um, the other one is a shoulder optimization and nutrition for soft tissue. And then the other one is nutrition for sports. Um, I've, I've partnered uh, a lot with um, a woman in town who is an Iyengar yoga and Pilates teacher. And a lot of her clientele um, are elderly people. And so we've had a lot of really successful workshops together where we're providing, you know, nutrition, but then also exercises that they can do at home. Well, that's going to take us, I think, up to the future. What's that look like for you? What are your plans and um, future endeavors with nutrition looking like? Um, yeah, so I would like to keep developing um, the workshops that I was just talking about. I'm finding a lot of value in those, and it's nice because, you know, you can get an audience of 20 people at one time and give them this information. Um, but I've also... I, you know, I still want to continue one-on-one -on -one services with people in my community because there's a great need for that and there's a lot of value in it. Um, and I think that the underlying most common issue I see with all of my clients is digestive distress. Sure. Um, as we know, it all starts in the gut. And as I'm going into my third year of practice, I'm becoming increasingly fascinated by the microbiome. And so I'm looking to further my understanding and study of this. So I'll definitely do some continuing education in this area um, so that I can know more and I can provide, you know, clients and workshops uh, with this information. Um, additionally, my work with Sacred Rock uh, is going to continue. We're working on a cookbook to share and offer as a donation for the organization. And that some of what we use is wild forage and caught food. And like I said, there's always a really exciting and interesting aspect um, of these trips for the youth. And so, you know, to keep developing that and work with them um, on developing this cookbook, I'm actually really excited about it because it, it'll, it'll be a little bit of a narrative, um, the stories of how these recipes came to be how we use them, um, how the youth like them. And then in the same vein, this has me working on recipes of native, whole and traditional foods, um, especially from the area. Uh, what are the nutritional components of the meal, how it all works, what we get from it and how that benefits us. Um, Beautiful. It's so, so refreshing to hear this. And what a great um, concept for the cookbook. I think adding the narrative to it makes it come alive. You yeah, know, you've got the recipes, you know, what the components of it are, but the story behind it makes it real. And it's like having you right in their kitchen with them. It's, it's just, I, I want a copy, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> Beautiful. What's coming up? I'm excited for you. I want to keep track of you for sure and have you stay in touch with us too. So with that, um, how can we stay in touch with you, Katie? Yes. So here's uh, some information on me. That's my business name, High Sierra Nutritional Wellness. Uh, the website link's there. I have an Instagram. 
um, at High Sierra Nutritional Wellness. And then for anyone who might be interested in the nonprofit, it's called Sacred Rock. That's our website link there. And we also have an Instagram at Sacred Rock. This is a stunning photograph. It, it makes me scared. <laughs> stunning. <laughs> I mean, I see the rope behind you, under you. I don't see one above you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> wow, wow. Bravo to you for your business, for your focus, for your intentions, for your love of nature, for your no love of the native communities and traditional ways of living and, and eating, Katie. This has been a beautiful share. I'm so excited for what you're doing and applaud you in the direction that you've chosen and the populations that you're focusing on and just the tremendous resources that you're bringing them and to improve their overall pleasure of living and quality of life and health. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Paula. And you know, it was really uh, through Hawthorne that I got most of this inspiration or it really, you know, spurred me along on this path and I'm really appreciative for that. And I'm appreciative to get to share my story of how it came to be. I, I I'm, was thrilled to feature you and hear everything. I hope you'll visit us again and continue to share your good works and tell us all about it. I'd love to. Thank you. You're welcome. And that said, I want to let everybody know that uh, we do these All About Alumni monthly. So our next one is Wednesday, December 6th at 12 noon Pacific time. And we'll go live with Amanda Jo Wilt. She's a graduate of our Nutrition Consultant Clinical Training Program. And just a reminder that we've had so many fantastic Hawthorne, usually, uh, Hawthorne graduate presentations previously. So I hope you'll explore the archived webinars on our website too and view their presentations as well. Until we meet again, I want to wish you all the best of health and encourage you to take good care. It matters. <laughs>